Lesson 2.4, writing linear functions. This is a pretty important part, especially as the SAT is concerned. There's a lot of questions with linear graphs where you either have to match the graph to the equations they give you or vice versa. Um, so kind of a foundation. So let's look at it. Let's first review slope-intercept form because writing slope-intercept form um, of the equation of a line. Well, slope-intercept form is in the form y equals mx plus b. So remember the, first of all, the y has to be all by itself. If it's not by itself, none of what I'm about to tell you works. Uh, but if y is by itself, this m, the number in front of the x, represents the slope. And the b, this back number, sometimes it's plus, sometimes it's minus, this represents the y-intercept, all right? Which also, the y-intercept is where you cross the y-axis when x equals zero. So that's kind of something else important to know that a y-intercept means it's going to be zero comma something. Um, later on down in this note sheet, we're going to talk about standard form because that's another way the SAT really loves to present lines. So we're going to kind of sneak that in as well. All right, so number one, they give me a graph. Um, first thing that I'm looking at or that I notice is that this line is falling it's falling from left to right. So I know that I'm going to have a negative slope. Um, so if it's a multiple choice, you can kind of peek at those choices and eliminate all that have a positive number in front of the X. But let's get started. So I know I'm going to have a Y. I know I'm going to have an X. What I need to do is I need to drop the two numbers in there that are important. Well, the first number I usually do, it's the easiest, is where do you cross the Y axis? So right here at a positive 2, that is my Y intercept. So my y-intercept equals 2, or is the point 0, 2. Um, and on my slope, I know it's going to be negative because it's falling from left to right. And then I actually have to count it up. I have to kind of go down, and I'm like, well, it looks like we go down 3, right 2. So we drop 3, we run 2. So my slope there is going to be 3 over 2. And I do have to remember to go a negative because it's falling from left to right. So I believe there we go. Slope intercept form. Life is good. All right, peaking at number two. This line is slowly but surely going up. So I know we're going to have a positive slope. So I know I'm going to be x equals positive number in front of x. Um, again, let's do the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is chilling right there. We cross at 3. Um, and my slope is actually going up 1 over 4. So it's always that vertical change over the horizontal change. Some people like to say rise and run. That's fine. Um, change in y over change in x, but positive 1 quarter. So there would be the slope intercept equation for that graph. All right, let's go down, see what else we got. See if we can get a little tougher. Find the slope of a line given two or more points. Um, so a couple different ways to look at this. Uh, one way is there is an equation. So remember, I always refer to the slope as the change in y over the change in x. And that's a Greek letter. That triangle is just a Greek letter delta that means change. Um, but really, to do it using points, you're going to subtract the y values, that's how you find the difference between the two y's. And then that's the, hor that's the vertical change. And then you're going to do the x values. So let me kind of show you what those signify. So when they give you two points, it really doesn't matter which pair is which, but I'm going to call this x sub 1, and that's the y one from the first pair. Then I have the x from the second pair and the y from the second pair. So if I follow my, my formula, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm just going to plug those values in there, but i got to be really careful with negatives. So sometimes I teach kids to uh, put your subtraction in before you even put any numbers in. That way you're less apt to screw it up. Um, so here we go. We have y2 take away the y1, and then I have x2 take away the x1. And now i got to make sure I don't mess this up when I do my math. 
Uh, 2 minus a negative 2, that's really plus a positive. So we're looking at 4. Negative 1, subtract 3. You never subtract. You always add the opposite. So that's a negative 4. Positive divided by a negative is a negative 1. So that line has a slope of negative 1. If you wanted to graph that, you could verify that you're going to go down one, right one, um, as you move your way down through the line. Now, sometimes you're given a table. Um, when you're given a table, you could just pick any two points you want, and you could do exactly what we did in example three. Um, or you could say, well, the slope has to be the change in y over the change in x. I normally don't write my tables left to right, but it seems like um, a lot of textbooks do that. You know, I typically would, would do my table vertically, but it doesn't really matter. The big thing is don't screw up uh, who's on top and who's on bottom. So I got to do the change in y. So y is changing. It's going up by 5, positive 5. And the x is went up by positive 3. So right there, we're looking at a change in y over a change in x of 5 thirds. Now, I'm assuming this is linear. Let's just double check and make sure. Going up by 5, up by 3, looks good. Up by 5, up by 3, looks good. So, yes, this is a linear function, and the slope is 5 over 3, positive. But remember, big thing, y is on top, all right? Y is on top. SAT always has the choices where the X's are on top, and they try to screw you up. All right, next section. Write the equation of a line given different information. So sometimes we just have one piece of something. Um, so in this case, let's look and see what the information we have. And then also it says write the equation of a line in both slope-intercept form. We already talked about the form that that is. But now we got to look at standard form. So standard form is an animal that the SAT really likes, and it's always in the form AX plus BY equals C. So the big takeaways from this are, number one, you want, maybe I'll number it instead of putting a dash there. Um, so number one, get X and Y on the same side. That's first. And number two, no fractions allowed. All right, no fractions. <clears throat> so we have to use our skill where we clear fractions by multiplying by that denominator. We'll probably do that here in a minute. So the easiest way, it's always easiest to start in slope-intercept form. Um, so this was just kind of the standard form thing right here. So let's see what we're given. Well, I always need... so. If you remember from geometry last year, we need certain info um, for our line. We need information for our equation. First and foremost is we always need the slope. We have to have that. The second thing that we always need is we always have to have a point. Sometimes we're lucky enough to get a y-intercept. Sometimes we're not. But bare minimum, I always need a slope and I always need a point. So let's look at number five. It says, with a slope of negative five. That's my first clue. So I'm going to put a starter equation up here. I'm going to say, well, I can kind of get started. And I can say y equals a negative 5x. All right. But I don't know, I don't know the y-intercept. So right now I'm just going to call it b. All right. The, the y-intercept is unknown. But because I have a point, all right, so we had our slope, check, that was good. We also have a point, and in this equation, my point is 1, 3. And what that does is it gives me an x, and it gives me a y that lives on that line. So I should be able to substitute, I should be able to substitute x and y into the equation. So here we go, Let's because what I'm going to do, this little method I'm about to do right here, this is called, I'm going to solve for B. It's the solve for B method. So let's stick the X and Y in. You know, so 1 is the X value, 3 is the Y value. So I say, all right, 3 equals negative 5 times 1 
plus b, which that's what we're trying to figure out here. Now we just got to solve it. We're like, well, 3 is negative 5 plus b. Add 5, add 5, and we get b equals 8. So now I can come back up here and I can rewrite my final equation. It's y equals a negative 5x, and instead of b, like in my starter equation, I know that it equals 8. All right, so that's slope intercept form. So I'll call it SI. So we are now officially in slope intercept form. Well, now to get to standard form, okay, I'm going to kind of erase this bottom stuff here. We've got our equation, we're good to go. But sometimes on the SAT, that's not the equation they have. Sometimes they have, we'll call it standard form, SF. Sometimes they want it in standard form. So think about what we have to do. For standard form, we got to get x and y on the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this 5x to both sides. And that just kind of repackages it. So now we have 5x plus 1y equals positive 8. And we have no fractions. So life is good. There's your answer for standard form. Here's your answer for slope-intercept form. And we are good to go. All right, let's move right along. Now, what if you're given two points? So remember earlier, I said that some things that we need, you always kind of want to think about your checklist. We need a slope, and we need a point. Any point will do. Uh, think of us the y-intercept, we're lucky. You know, if one of them are zero comma something, then we can just roll, we don't even have to solve for b. But we're not so lucky on this one. So I look at this, and they give me two points, but no slope. So let's find the slope like we did in the examples up above. So slope, remember, change in y over change in x. So I'm going to do y subtract y, 5 take away a negative 3, and then x subtract x. 2 take away a negative 2. And I clean that up a little bit. And I get 8 over 4, which is just 2. So I'm like, all right, sweet. We now have our slope. Our slope equals 2. So once I get my slope, I get to get started on my starter equation. y equals slope x. Uh, but we're missing the b. And I peek up above, I don't see a zero comma something, so that would be nice. I could just stick the B in there. We don't have it. Now, we need a point, and since we're given two points, we're going to choose our point. And I like to choose positive points if possible, so I'm going to choose 2, 5 as my point. I could have picked a negative 2, negative 3, but why punish yourself? So let's plug it in. The, the Y is 5. The x is 2, and we need to figure out what b is. So 5 equals 4 plus b, minus 4 from both sides, we get b equals 1. Awesome. So now I can write my final slope-intercept equation. y equals 2x, I've solved for b. Boom. So slope-intercept si, you are done. Now for standard form, not too bad. All I have to do is I have to move that 2x to the other side. So I'm going to go negative 2x plus y equals positive 1. A lot of times on the SAT, they'll leave it like that. I have seen sometimes, though, where they make that x value be positive. So they'll multiply everything by a negative 1, or divide, however you want to look at it. And they just change all the signs. Those two are the same exact equation. Just one has a negative one distributed through it. Um, so just be aware, if, if you're looking for an answer and you don't see it, that might be what happened to you. Now, I didn't put any in the notes here, but you could potentially have a, have a question, and I'm going to kind of go off the grid. You could potentially have a question where, let, let's say you, you do it and you get y equals one-third uh, x plus four. 
and we're in slope intercept and you need to get to standard form, all right? So you need to get x to the other side, but the most important part is you can't have fractions in standard form. So what you would do is you would multiply everybody by three. So times by three, times by three, times by three, and you'd have three y equals, those cancel, that's why I did it. You'd have that, and then you move the x to the other side by changing its sign. And that would be standard form, okay, with no fractions. Or you may have to change all the signs by distributing a negative one through. Either one of those are the same exact line as the original y equals one third x plus four. So that's an example where you uh, got to clear out some fractions. I think that comes up maybe on a homework assignment. All right, going down here, ooh, a monopoly. In the game of Monopoly, a player who lands on a property that is owned by another player must pay rent to the owner. For most colored properties, the rent can be modeled by a linear function. So they're saying that rent can be modeled by the selling price. So when you compare the rent to the selling price, there is a linear relationship when you graph those. So we have let x equal the selling price and let y equal the rent. So in our little chart they give us over here, you know, these are the x's and these are the y's. Remember, y is also f of x. Um, so we kind of have that going on. And they give us five different properties there, one from each color. So it says write an equation in slope-intercept form from the table. All right, well, wow. So whoever created this game, there's some math behind how much you get paid for rent based on what the selling price was. So for slope-intercept form, I need two things. Remember, I always go back to I need a slope and I need a point. So let's, let's go after our slope. Our slope is the change in y over the change in x. So there's my slope. Well, let's see, change in y over change in x. So it looks like we go up by 4, and over here we go up by 40. So according to that set of values, change in y over change in x, 4 over 40 would be 1 tenth. So I'm thinking my slope is 1 tenth. Um, if I check another set of numbers, 6 to 14, well that goes up by 8. You might be like, well, wait a minute, what the heck? But if you look over here, it goes up by 80. So it's still 8 over 80, change in y over change in x, is still 1 tenth. So all the way down the chart, you're going to find that it, it reduces down to 1 tenth. Beautiful. So we have our slope. So to write our equation, starter equation, y equals slope x. Don't know the y-intercept. We don't know when x is 0. Um, so we got to solve for b. We now can choose a point. So I don't know the easiest point to choose. Maybe let's just choose that little uh, 60 and 2. 60 is our x, 2 is our y. Be careful there, because remember, x was the selling price, y was the rent. Um, so let's plug those in here. So I have 2 equals 1 tenth times 60 plus, I don't know. Well, let's clean this up a little bit. 2 equals 1 tenth of 60 is 6 plus b minus 6 from both sides. Looks like b is negative 4. So it looks like we have an equation here. y equals 1 tenth of x subtract 4. That is the modeling equation, all right? This, this is the model that, that describes the game of Monopoly and the relationship between price and rent. So that's going to be important in a minute. Remember that, 1 tenth x minus 4. And let's go down. Graph the relationship between the selling price and the rent. So I need to kind of peek at that table again. Let me cheat for a second and just jot these down on my, on my sideboard. 
So I have 62, 106, 180, and 14, 280, and 24, and 320, and 28. All right, so those are my X's and those are my Y's. Um, now that graph, there's not a lot of, you know, I know the first thing somebody's going to say in class is like, hey, there's not enough squares. You don't have 320 squares. So we got to change the scale. Just like on your graphing calculator, you got to get good at changing the window. Um, so right here it says, I, I kind of give you a hint. I said use a scale of 50 for the x-axis. On your graphing calculator, it shows up as x SCL, and you would set it to 50. So that means on the x-axis, I want to go up by 50s. So I want to go 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. And then it says on the y-axis, we want to do scales of 5. So our y scale is going to equal 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And let's plot some dots here. Man. Let's get our graph on there. So we have 60, 2. So I just got to kind of eyeball this a little bit. I'm guessing 60, 2 is right in there. Uh, 106, maybe right there. 180 and 14, 180 and 14, maybe somewhere right in that area. Uh, 280 and 24, 280 and almost a 25, and then 320 and 28, which is maybe right about in there. So hopefully this is somewhat of a decent line. Looks pretty good. So there's our line. So yes, it, it is a linear relationship between those two. Now, the, the two questions to the right says use the graph to predict the rent for Illinois, which was not in the chart, which has a selling price of 240. So a selling price of 240 would be right around in here. And I just go up. Boop. It looks like somewhere around 20. All right. About $20. Now, it might be 19, it might be 21, I don't know. <clears throat> the big thing is, the graph is just going to be an approximate, all right? Looking at a graph is just kind of a guess, especially if it doesn't cross at one of these nice, like, lattice points, like right on a corner somewhere. Those are called lattice points. But we do have a perfect equation that we can get the exact price. <clears throat> so our equation was y equals 1 tenth x minus 4. And since we know that we have a selling price of 240, the selling price was X. So rent is one tenth of 240. Take away four. Well, that's just 24 subtract four. So it looks like it did check out. Rent is $20. Um, and we built our model, we used it, we tested it, everything looks good. All right, what else do we got? Oh, looks like that's it. All right, hopefully these notes help you out with the practice. If not, you can talk to me in class. See you.